What's up, Facebook? So, I put up a status three days ago. <laughs> that said, I got a word for y'all. I hope y'all not tired of me. Um, come on, my little makeshift light. Even if you are, I'll see you tonight, Facebook. So, by tonight, I mean three days later tonight. <laughs> um... So I've been in Jeremiah all month. I've been in Jeremiah 16 through chapter 33 because in 16, he starts off and he's like, and God's telling Jeremiah, hey, I'm going to curse this land. Okay. Don't be friends with them. Don't go hang out with them. Don't marry nobody. Don't have no kids with them. Like basically say to yourself, Jeremiah, because it's going down. 16 he curses the land all the way 17 chapters later he says okay i'm gonna heal the land right um but in between there a lot of stuff happens okay um so god has given jeremiah these words and he's telling jeremiah look don't diminish these words the way i say sam sam you know how your mama tell you to go say some stuff and then you try to be like nice about it but your mama really was like on 10 when she said it. Well, God was like, if I tell it to you on 10, say it on 10. Whatever I say, you say, right? Um, so he's telling Jeremiah to give all these hard words. And Jeremiah's like, ain't going to be no more marriages. Ain't going to be no more happiness. It's over. It's a curse, right? Um. So God also gives Jeremiah a word to give to like these kings and these rulers. And God is like, hey, this is what's going to happen to y'all. King Nebuchadnezzar, my servant. Listen, Nebuchadnezzar was not a righteous king. And we know this. He was out here telling people he was going to kill everybody in their house and burn them up and make their house a dunghill. Y'all know what a dunghill is? It's a pile of crap. Right? Nebuchadnezzar was not righteous. Nonetheless, God used him. God used him as a tool of, um, as a tool, a rod to punish his children for being, getting over into idolatry and disobedience, right? Um, so just know God will use and can use anybody, right? So, hey, he said, Nebuchadnezzar, my servant, um, I'm going to use him and you will bow your knee to him. He going to come to Jerusalem. He coming to Judah. He coming to all of Israel and he going to carry y'all off. Right. He carry y'all off. Y'all going to Babylon and, and, and God tells them what's going to happen. So we get over into chapter, where we at? I'm just skipping all over Jeremiah, but I'm letting y'all know we, it's a setup. Okay. Stay here for the setup. Right, I I think I titled this live uh make yourself at home, multiply while you wait. So good guys. Just bear with me till I get till I get there. I'm 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 slow walking us to Jeremiah twenty nine. Um so twenty seven I um after he tells them, Hey, this is what's gonna happen. This is weird. So what's weird is that God is telling them to follow a, a unrighteous leader. Corey say, take, take, listen, Corey, this is some good stuff. Okay. So this is what's crazy is that God is telling them to follow this unrighteous leader. Like God, we, your kids, you telling us to follow an unrighteous leader. Matter of fact, God was so strongly about this is that he said he's going to make them drink this cup of madness he gonna make them drink this cup what do you say he gonna make them drink this cup and and for those who well he gonna make them bow their knee to nebuchadnezzar so those who don't want to will anyway so that's god being that dude god is saying even for the nations that don't want to oh you will yes you will right so he took away some people be like oh god don't usurp your free will Listen, I ain't been walking with God long a long time. It's about been about three years. 
almost three years now. But listen, when God say do something, yeah, he gives you free will to an extent. But don't you ever think when he command you to when he say something is about to happen and he and you gonna do something, you gonna do it, okay? I did not come to God like willingly and be I didn't even say the prayer of salvation, y'all. So sorry for all you religious folks out there. Your girl did not pray the prayer of salvation. Anyway, so this is where we are. God is telling them you're gonna get carried off to Babylon. Um so Listen, them commands, God don't be playing. Like, I don't know too many times when, when your mom when your mom say clean the room. Matter of fact, when your daddy open his mouth and say something. You do have free will. This is the thing people don't understand about free will, okay? Yes, you have free will to do what you would like to do. You also have consequences of those that free will, right? Jonah. God said, go to Nineveh, get them people saved, which I was a really good revelation that people don't understand why Jonah was running. He was running because it was like God telling a Jew that's all the way in America to go over to Germany and get healing them saved. Like, would you want to do that? No. Anyway, long story short, God is telling his people like, yo, y'all about to get carried off to captivity. All right. Freedom of choice, but not free. Exactly. You got freedom of choice, but not freedom of confidence. <laughs> Ooh. Sam, Apostle. Thank you, Apostle. But you know what's happening right now in real life, okay? <laughs> anyway, also, for those of you who have never seen me in real life, I actually do sparkle like this. Like, this is not a, like a... It may be a Facebook filter, but I really do sparkle. Anyway, so we here. <laughs> we here, okay? God is telling Jer Jeremiah, tell them this is what's going to happen. Don't try to fight it because it's going to happen. What's crazy about this is that God, God is telling them to follow an unrighteous leader. What part of follow an unrighteous leader so I can preserve you makes sense? Right? <laughs> apostle <laughs> right like it makes no sense this is why you got to hear from god because what he telling them makes absolutely zero sense nebuchadnezzar of babylon first of all babylon them he thought he was god right babylon ruled the entire known world this is why you have to hear from god jeremiah was telling them something that on his face did not sound like god he was saying value Bow down to Nebuchadnezzar, my servant. God called this unrighteous king his servant, right? I don't even know if Nebuchadnezzar had... I, and Nebuchadnezzar was like his own God. He was out here like Oprah or somebody. You feel me? Nebuchadnezzar was so arrogant. I don't even think he like just had a God, right? Well, he they had gods, but Nebuchadnezzar definitely thought he was a God, right? He was on some Marvel comic Thor type stuff. You feel me? Um, but anyway, so Jeremiah gives them these really harsh words, words that do not sound like they're from God, words that if if the people had no, um, he was Kanye, his day. <laughs> Listen, Kanye ain't had none on Nebuchadnezzar, okay? Nebuchadnezzar was around, he talked about he was going to turn people home into a pile of... It's in Daniel, y'all go read it. Matter of fact, if you got the Blue Air Bible app, just look up Dunghill, and Daniel going to be everywhere. Nebuchadnezzar was out here. He was down bad. Anyway, so we hear, and if the people that had no discernment to know this is from God, then they would have did what they did. And first of all, they tried it. They were so pissed off about this word from God. First of all, they said, Jeremiah, you don't hear from God. Second of all, they were like, all right, we need to kill this dude because... He tripping. He over here lying. Whoop de whoop de whoop. And that's what a lot of y'all do, right? When a prophet, when a prophet of God comes to y'all and gives y'all a hard word, y'all be looking around for somebody to get y'all. So y'all be following all these people giving y'all soft words that are not from God. Like that's what happened to Jeremiah. So Jeremiah twenty eight, Hananiah was another prophet. 
So he saw that the words of Jeremiah troubled the people. And and honestly, he was just pissed off. You know what I'm saying? Jeremiah, I think they called Jeremiah the weeping prophet. I see why he was crying. I get it. He had nothing but hard words for God's people. I won't say nothing because he, he then announced that the curse was lifted. But man, chapter 16 through 33. 16 to curse, 33 is lifted. But in between then, it got ugly. So Hananiah started telling the people... He started prophesying, as they said. He started prophesying, saying, you know, after two years, the yoke will be broken from your neck. Meaning, after two years, God is going to come free you from Babylon. whoop de whoop de whoop um, And as a prophetic act, Jeremiah went around with a yoke on his neck. Right? It, he went around with an actual yoke. If you've never seen a yoke, Google it. It's actually made for cattle. To It's like you put it around their neck. I think you use it. Why do you use it for cattle? To control them for sure. Right? I don't know all the ins and outs, but it's definitely a form of control for cattle. It's a literal yoke around the neck. So Jeremiah wore one for as a prophetic act. If you see people say, you know, you you see y'all see people do prophetic acts. Like maybe they like striking something in the spirit or you know, whatever, raising their hands, prophetic acts, right? Um, people who believe in God for cars or homes or something like that may go get keys as prophetic acts, which reminds me, I really need to get my keys anyway. Um, so he, he breaks the yoke off of, uh, uh, Jeremiah's neck, the actual yoke that was on his neck. Cause Jeremiah was doing a prophetic act. And he says, just like I broke this yoke off of Jeremiah's neck, God will break the yoke of Babylon. And a yoke means is a form of control. Um, if you in unforgiveness, a lot of times they'll say you got a yoke around your neck and stuff because that person is controlling you, right? Anyway, so Hannah and I are just out here tripping. He tried to get the people what they want. You ever heard that? Get the people what they want? Well, that don't work with God. God said, get the people what I tell you to get them. And so Jeremiah doing just that. He giving them people exactly what God said, right? So when, Je when Hannah and I did this, God went to Jeremiah and told and said, speak this. Um, you know, tell the hand and I that he going to die this year. So when God said he going to die this year, hand and I, you did. Right. So this happened. They said this happened in the fifth month. Hand and I was dead by the seventh month. Okay. And I was out here lying to these people talking about God said woo de woo de woo trying to make Jeremiah God's actual prophet look stupid because he had a hard word for the people. Um and two months later, he out of here. So for y'all who think that God don't really be taking people out of here, you need to think again. He do. For half of y'all that think COVID actually took everybody who died from COVID. I'm done. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. We are all caught up. We're all caught up. So the word of the Lord to from Jeremiah to the people was that this unrighteous king, his servant, um, y'all going to serve him. This is like God telling his people, like Christians, God's people, that, hey, um... Oh, a really good example. Hey, uh, y'all are going to be carried away by Russia and you got to serve Putin. What if a prophet prophesied that? Does that sound like God at all? No, not at all. So that's exactly how the people in Israel felt. That is exactly the equivalent of God telling a prophet today. Hey, all, all my sons and daughters over here in America, y'all going to get carried off by Russia and go serve Putin, right? It's the equivalent of that. So now you can see why the people is like, man, Jeremiah, you trash. You ain't here from God. You lying. Whoop -de -whoop -de -whoop. But when we get the verse to chapter 29, it goes down, right? Listen, this is what you need to know about God's word. It cannot return void. Have you ever seen rain and snow Falling and halfway between the sky and the ground, it goes back up. Have you ever seen it? You will never see it. And that's how God's word is.
they hit the bull eye, bullseye every time. So the people get carried off to Babylon in Jeremiah 29. This is where we are now. Um, this is why I named it what I named it. Uh, this live what I named it. So people get carried off to Babylon along with the king, his eunuchs, all the leaders, the royal court. They all get carried off to Babylon. And so God has them, Jeremiah, send a letter telling the people to. So here's the thing. God is so, he's so God, y'all. People are like, God is good. God is God. Right? And if you notice, Jeremiah didn't get carried off. He left a remnant in the land, which he, he always does. Anyway, um, so Jeremiah, listening to God, he writes a letter to the people, right? He, in this letter, as they get carried off captive, they're getting, getting ruled by Babylon. Imagine somebody, imagine God himself telling you, hey, you my chosen son, you my chosen daughter. You, I gave you all this earth to rule. And then a bunch of people that don't even care about, about God, who hate God, who don't even believe in God. Now God is telling you, hey, but these people are going to rule you, right? So... They get carried off like God said they would by the, by the mouth of Jeremiah. And Jeremiah writes them a letter. And in this letter, he tells them, we in Jeremiah 29, basically he tells them to make themselves at home. Right? Because the word of the Lord was, you will get carried off by Babylon for 70 years and then I'm going to bring you back. 70 years. It's all in, it's all in Daniel. But around Daniel is when Jeremiah overlaps. Jeremiah prophesied it. We got to see Daniel who got carried off livid. Right? So it's really cool. Okay? So he tells them plant gardens, eat of the gardens, marry, marry son, you know, marry men, men marry women, give your daughters off to be married, give your sons off to be married. He is telling them to live their lives Okay, in Jeremiah 29, he said, live their life. Let me let me get y'all over to 29 real quick. So y'all won't think I'm tripping. Right? So he says, verse 5, build ye houses and dwell in them and plant gardens and eat the fruit of them. Take ye wives and beget sons and daughters and take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands that they may bear sons and daughters that ye may be increased there and not diminished. Right, so they all up in captivity, and God telling them to yo live your life. Daddy, I am I will be over here like daddy, you what's up? I'm here with Babylon them. Why are you telling me to live my life like ain't nothing wrong? The the kicker is this is that the people of Israel know who they are, right? Like they strayed away from God, but they, they still know that God will called them to be chosen people. Don't it just suck when, like, let's say you got a prophetic word over your life and you know you're supposed to be like that dude or that girl or whatever in a certain area. But God got you over here studying under somebody you know is is not right. And God say, make yourself at home. Live your life. And he don't stop there. He said, and seek First of all, this is what we miss. That ye may be increased there and not diminished. Multiply while you wait. He is saying, I am going to bring you back, but you got 70 years. You may as well make yourself at home. Plant gardens, eat good of them. Raise sons, raise daughters, get married. That you may be increased and not diminished. Right? This is what I learned about this life. No matter what Satan got going on, no matter what these humans got going on, this is between me and my daddy. Right? If my daddy tell me to go to freaking Cape Cod, I'm going to Cape Cod. If he tell me to sit sit over in Houston and wait on him, if he tell me to go work a job for five years until he call me out to something, this life is between you and your daddy, your heavenly daddy. Okay. So this is what he's saying. What's funny is that even in their disobedience, even in all this idolatry, they, 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 they flat foot serving other guys. They trying to kill God's prophets. 
God still has so much mercy on them that he says, I'm not going to take y'all out. Even though I have to call this king, this unrighteous king to punish you guys, I'm going to bring y'all right back because you my boos. You guys boo. Okay. Y'all know y'all be getting mad at y'all's kids that y'all may punish them. Some y'all may even beat them. You know what I'm saying? But when that time of punishment is over, they come right back to the dinner table, right? When you done with the belt, they not not your kids no more. You feel me? So that's what God is doing to him. He says, so he says, and seek the peace of the city, whither I have caused you to be carried away captives and pray unto the Lord for it. For in the peace thereof shall ye have peace. Listen, listen. Okay. For the, okay. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Cause it's good. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, let not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you. Neither hearken to your dreams for ye cause to be dream for they prophesy falsely. Right. Verse 10, for thus saith the Lord that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you after 70 years. I'm going to visit you and perform my good word toward you in causing you to return to this place. Okay, so people like to quote Jeremiah 29 11, but they don't really do the context of it, right? And this could be a whole teaching, but I'm going to go back to what I named this, but this is good. He says, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. What was the expected end? The expected end was that was that God was going to bring them back home and they will flourish as God's people, right? That was the expected end. We quote that scripture a lot. Jeremiah 29, 11, Jeremiah 29, 11. We quote it so much, but do you know in context, this was God the people he was talking to, his people were in captivity and God was telling them, sit tight, right? Live your life, multiply where you are. As a matter of fact, while you at it, pray for this, the land I sent you to so you can have peace. So I don't know why a bunch of y'all be out here cursing America like y'all don't live here because now y'all see what y'all, when you open your mouth against this country and sugar turn to crap, I'm saved now. I would have said something else. You know, the unsaved word for crap, you get it, which actually sounds way better than sugar to crap. Anyway, you get it. When sugar turn, you know what? You the first one. Whoop de whoop de woo. The government this, the government that. No, this is your problem. Your mouth. You speaking curses against this land and wonder why you don't dwell in peace. Wonder why some of y'all scared to send y'all kids to school right now. Wonder why some of y'all won't even take jobs in schools right now. Boop, 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 boop. OK, you need to do what God said. He's telling his people. And, and matter of fact, you're not even over here captive. I get how our country started. I get slavery. I get all this stuff. I get I get it. I get sharecropper and indentured servitude. I get it. But you are a free man and or a woman. Right. This is your country. These people God was talking to pray for the peace of the land so you can have peace. They were being carried captive into a whole nother land. Right. You sitting yo first world, but in America speaking against America. And this ain't even my message. I'm just saying it's Jeremiah 29 is packed with what you need to be doing right now. Anyway, so what does God tell them to do in captivity? He said, for sure, this is my word. Right. I have to I have to. I have to um, carry you off into Babylon, because if I don't, you're going to keep going the same way you're going and it's not going to be pretty for you. So I'm going to use Babylon and their un unrighteous Babylon as, as my hammer for punishment, right? But the kicker is what God going to do to them because it just really is not fair. Like, unless if you're not a child of God, it's really not fair for you out here in these streets because God will use you all day to maybe slap the, pop the hand of one of his kids, but then he'll get you for popping them. Anyway, so God tells them, hey, you're going to get carried off to Babylon. Matter of fact, verse, chapter 29, they're there. They're carried off to Babylon. So God has Jeremiah write a letter to them. And he says, what does he say do? He says, build houses, build guard, plant gardens, eat of those gardens, um, take wives, have sons, look, have, have, take your wives, have all the sex you want. 
have all the kids you want. Get those kids off to be married. Give your sons off to be married to daughters. Give your daughters off to be married to sons. Um, you know what I'm saying? And he says, multiply right there. Multiply where you are. I know y'all sitting here waiting. I know uh, all these false prophets have lied to y'all. He says, don't hearken to them. Right? Don't listen to, to your prophets and, your, and the diviners, the people who are out here doing witchcraft and stuff. Don't listen to them. They lying. Because I'm telling you right now, you going to be gone for 70 years is real. He told them exactly what the punishment was. And he assured them, this is the punishment. I'm telling you. For Israel, he said, this is your punishment. You're going to be gone for 70 years. And then after what, I'm going to bring you back. But while you're gone, make yourself at home. Right? So this is, it's so much in this. All right? Please listen to me. Okay? He says, make yourselves at home. He said, do not Wait around. Don't stop your life because you got a, this prophetic word and you want to sit around your room waiting on it to come through, come true. You know, this is why God don't be telling us what's next. Like he was very gracious to Israel to tell them. He told them everything. He said, you're going to get carried off. It's going to be for 70 years, but then I'm going to bring you back and then we're going to be all good. Right. Um, so, but the gist of the letter was make yourself at home. This is the message to somebody out there. I don't know who it's for. It helped me. Hopefully this helped you. Um, God was telling them, do not wait, right? Don't stop your lives expecting God to change his mind. Don't stop your life expecting God to change his word. Maybe you feel like you in the wilderness maybe you feel like you in your babylon maybe you feel like you got carried off to some foreign you know foreign enemy territory i don't know what what it is in life maybe you feel like i was supposed to be here how did i get here you know what i'm saying i've been here for too long and you just stop your life i've done this before you stop your life and you want to like god I'm supposed to be doing this. You said this. This is supposed to be in my life. Or you get prophetic words and it's like a big word. It's like a big word. Like, you know what I'm saying? God is going to use you to do mighty things. Woof de woo. But you, all you see with your natural eyes that you still work in the sign of fire. You still broke. You still this. You still that. You know what I'm saying? Um, But you know the word of the Lord for your life, right? You know it. So what? what do you do? Make yourself at home. Multiply while you wait. Listen to what God told them. Build houses. Plant gardens. Eat the fruit thereof. Marry. Be joy. You know what I'm saying? Live. Don't stop. Don't stop living. Just because you aren't where you want to be. You know what I'm saying? Don't stop living. It. And oh, by the way, multi multiply while you wait. You know, God says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. For good, not for evil. To give you an expected end. Your expected end will come. That thing you're expecting God for will come. But it's while while it yet tarries, you need to be found living your life. You need to be found multiplying while you wait. You feel me? Right? There may be dream, you know. Amen, Corey. Now, what happens after after, right? Let's go to the after. We know we know the word of the Lord to Israel was 70 years. You're gonna be in captivity 70 years. Make yourself at home. Multiply while you wait. Pray for the peace of the land where you are. If you somewhere where you don't want to be, I just want you to stop and pray for the peace of that area. Maybe you you live in which painter still. Maybe you, you know, couch surfing. Everywhere you couch surf, pray for that. I've been there too. Pray for the peace of the place you're in. Maybe you're in a whole other country you don't want to be in, but God got you there. Pray for the peace of that country. Maybe you're in America and you're still talking cash money crap about America. Pray for the peace of that country. Wherever you are, pray for the peace of that area so you can have peace. Not so. Who cares about them? This is selfish. I want peace. Peace is like top on my food chain. I live a very peaceful life. 
Okay? Pray for the peace of the land where you are. Okay? So God is so good. He's telling them exactly what's going to happen. And he's telling them not to listen to nobody. Stop listening to people. Y'all sit here listening to people tell you, oh, it's going to be okay, girl. It's going to... God going to do it now. Whoop -de -whoop -de -whoop. And you know good and darn well God told you to be patient and walk this out. But you want to listen to your friend that's getting you just unhappy for no reason. Talk about God lying on God like they hear from God. A lot of y'all need new friends because y'all friends do not be hearing from God. They hear from a God, but it ain't capital G-O-D God. Get people around you that hear who, who hear the, the voice of God capital g-o-d the lord who have the holy spirit in them okay capital h capital s all right so he says don't listen to him thus said the lord of hosts god of israel let not your prophets or your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you and neither he says this neither hearken to your dreams which he have caused to dream don't even listen to yourself listen he's saying don't listen to this person don't listen to this person and and if you just so literally hell bent on leaving where God has says that you're going to be for a certain time, you can't even trust yourself. A lot of people like, oh, I had a dream that whoop -de -whoop -de -whoop. Yeah, you had the dream because you have you have desired in your heart for that thing that God never told you. You can't even trust yourself at that point. Right. Because yourself is warring against god what god said right exactly mute yourself and one good way to mute yourself is to get in that word i'm telling you i'm saying so after these 70 years what's gonna happen for thus saith the lord that after 70 years be accomplished at babylon i will visit you and perform my good word toward you and causing you to return so he says after this time for, for Israel, 70 years. For you, it may be seven days, seven months. I don't know. Maybe it's wait five more minutes. Just sit here and wait five more minutes. Maybe it just wait this one little hour. And it's almost, you, know, you can't you can't even wait that hour. You know what I'm saying? Maybe it's like, wait six months. I don't know. I don't know what he told you. I don't know, you know. But he's saying, wait there. I will surely accomplish. I will perform. I'll visit you and I will perform my good toward you and causing you to return. And then that's when he says, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, said the Lord, thoughts to, of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Okay, this is where we, verse 12 says, Then shall ye call upon me and ye shall go and pray unto me and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. And I will be found of you, saith the Lord, and I will turn away your captivity and I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you, saith the Lord. And I will bring you again into the place whence I caused you to be carried away captive. If God is not good, I don't know which I'll he good. OK. He good. Like, I don't end the story. He did all of this. God loved them so much that instead of just ending them like he could have did. Instead of ending them. He said, all right, I have to punish you. I got to. Because if I don't, you will never return to me. I hope you guys realize that, okay, we be praying for houses. We pray for cars. We pray for promotions. We pray for money. We pray for deliverance. We pray for a lot of stuff. And the only thing God wants is you. God has gone through extra lengths just to get us. I mean, the Bible is literally a book of him chasing us, of him sending his only son to die for us. It is a book of him 
having made a covenant with his dear friend Abraham and keeping that covenant to his dear friend because he loves us. God did all this. He told Israel, you're going to be carried captive for 70 years. Then I'm going to bring you back. But in those 70 years, I want you to make yourself at home. Marry. Have, take wives. Take husbands. Have a bunch of kids. Plant gardens. You know what I'm saying? Build houses. Make yourselves at home. Don't listen to nobody tell you anything that contrary to my word. Because it's going to be 70 years. Then he said, but at the end of those 70 years, I'm going to perform the good I told you I was going to do towards you. I'm going to bring you back home. Why? So that you will cry out, call out to me and I'm going to answer. So you pray to me and I'm going to hearken to your voice. He did all this to restore his relationship with his people. I don't even... I know I know parents who would not do this for their own kids that came out of their womb. Like, and granted, obviously we come from God, but you know what I'm saying? Like, some people be like, all right, do what you want. God could have really just given them over to whatever they had going on. I mean, they was making their kids pass through the flame. All this stuff, just crazy stuff. Worshiping other guys, doing all kind of crazy practices. He could have left them there, but instead, in his great mercies, he went and grabbed the unrighteous king and the unrighteous nation and to preserve his kids, to preserve. As a matter of fact, he said that, that Babylon was even going to take the things in the temple out. But he said he just he will have them take it out so he can preserve those things and then they'll bring it right back after the 70 years. Right. So. God was so good to his kids. I mean, it's just so much. And I, so much I just want to. And, and Jeremiah 29 is just so much. But this is what I hope you, you get out of this tonight. This is what I hope you get out of this today, this morning, whenever you're listening to this. Um, is that instead of crying out to God. when you And I'm talking to the people who know. Who, who not that you in a dire situation or whatever, but you know who I'm talking to. I'm talking to you. I feel like if you're on this live, you needed to hear. If you ran across this video on YouTube or Facebook, wherever I post it, you need to hear it, right? Stop crying out to God when he is telling you that he, that his word is true. He will perform all those things he promised you, but you got to walk this out. Make yourself at home. Stop stopping life. When a lot of people do this, when they feel like God didn't answer their prayer or when things don't go well for them or how they feel like they should because they this and they that. Really, we don't, God don't owe us nothing, right? He don't owe us nothing. Like, what's wrong with y'all? Y'all be the main ones. I don't owe y'all nothing. God Almighty owes us nothing. But in his great mercies, he will sit us down. He will send us places. Um, all while the promise is still there, but you got to walk it out, right? Like I was saying, some they we pout like spoiled brats when God don't answer us how we feel like he should have, or when he don't answer us when we feel like he should answer. Like who are we to feel like we got to pray now and he going to, and he going to, right? So we stop our lives. We sit in our room, lay on our face, talking about we fasting and praying. God's saying, get up and go live your life. You know what I'm telling you. You got to walk this out. Go live your life. Eat, pray, be merry. Be merry. Go merry. Skip around. Have kids. Make yourself at home. Don't listen to nobody tell you something that's contrary to what you know God is saying to you. A lot of people let these people with all these titles tell them something that they know God ain't said, that they know in a quiet time with God, God has said total opposite. Don't be fooled, okay? Don't listen to these false prophets. Don't go getting psychic tarot card readings, whatever, whatever. Don't be fooled. Just don't, okay? Make yourselves at home. Oh, while you at it, multiply while you wait. Pray for peace of whatever environment you find yourself in, right? Those three things. 
while we while while we wait on God, those three things. Make yourself at home. I'm not saying get complacent and 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 not strive or whatever whatever. I'm saying in if God has put you where you are, no matter how much you disagree with it, and no matter how different it looks from what God has promised you, stay there. Make yourself at home. Multiply where you are. Pray for the peace of the environment you're in so you can have peace. Right? And he he will surely visit you and he will surely perform all the good towards you that he promised. I promise you that. Because God is not a man that he should lie. And men be out here lying. And when I say men, I mean ladies too. We just all be out here lying sometimes. Right? Just, I hope this helped. Y'all know I don't be closing stuff out. I probably got sleepy eyes right now. Okay? So, make yourself at home where you are. Multiply where you are. Pray for the peace of the environment that you are in so you can have peace. Okay? And God will surely perform everything, I promise. That was That's the word for the month of June. God will perform. There will be a performance. Shout out to Covered by God. You know what I'm saying? Follow, our, follow the ministry, CoveredByGod.co. Follow our ministry. Okay, that's that's a shameless plug for what we got going on. Um, but I'm going to hop off, guys. I really hope this helps somebody. This blessed me so much. And there's so much more revelation I got in Jeremiah 29. Ooh. One day, guys. One day at a time. All right. Um, shout out to the Replay Squad. Shout out to my peeps over on Facebook and YouTube and IG if you're listening. Okay. I love you guys to life. I will see you tomorrow. Okay? Peace.